Pokemon cards are a terrible investment. This is a message that I received recently. Let's talk about it. I'm Kakashi with Kanto Capital, and recently I received a very interesting message talking about Pokemon investing and how it's just a terrible investment. And so I want to talk a little bit about this message. I'm going to paraphrase it. I don't have the exact message word for word here, but I just took some quick notes. And what the message essentially says is Pokemon cards are a terrible investment. $2,500 for, let's say this Latios, Latios GX, $2,500. The average person doesn't have that type of disposable money to put thousands of dollars in the Pokemon cards. The message continues, I invested and now I have a bunch of useless cards that no one is buying off of me. All right, so there is a lot to, to dissect here. Uh, before we get started and talk about that, I want to do a quick price update on this Latios Latios GX. So this card at the last of my last video, it was valued somewhere around $2,500 at the time that I recorded it. The highest I saw the price go on this card was about $3,000. It was in the $2,800, $2,900 range. Not sure if that person had to pay sales tax. So I'm going to just go ahead and round that up to $3,000 as the highest price that I personally witnessed for this type of card. As of today or the recently, the last time that I checked the prices, this card was selling for around $1,600, $1,700. So I'm just going to round it down to currently valued at around $1,500. So we went from a very top peak of $3,000 down to $1,500. So it's a 50% decline since my last video. And so on the basis of, is this card or other Pokemon cards a terrible investment? And the real question is, when are you buying these cards? So this card had went from, before all of this crazy price action and this card going to $2,500 and $3,000, before that, this card was at $500 to $1,000. So if you got it anywhere within that price range before the hype, keyword before the hype, then you would have made a hefty profit. If you bought this several years ago, or maybe you just love the card, and by the way, beautiful artwork. One of the reasons this really caught my eye is because cards like this are absolutely stunning. But if you're making purchases, you want to buy things before the hype ever gets there. You want to buy them when no one is paying attention. And as far as making smart purchases, what we want to do is we want to buy cards like this before it reaches those hype phases. If this card goes from $500 to $3,000 and does a 6x multiple, how much higher do you think it has to go? What are you going to sell it for if you're looking for financial gain? Now, if you just want to buy this card for your personal collection because it's a beautiful card and it's just something that you're hoping to retain some value, then get it whenever you feel comfortable and just understand what you're purchasing. Understand that you're getting it during a hype phase and when things are kind of at its fever pitch. And so if this card goes to $3,000, it does a 6x and you're looking to buy it to, let's say, make a profit on it. What are you expecting it to do after it's already multiplied six times? Are you going to sell this card for $5,000? Are you going to sell this card for $10,000 and maybe uh, you know double your money? What, what is your goal here? What is your expectation when you buy this? And so when we're buying things with the purpose of hopefully making a profit, we need to buy them before it catches everyone's eye. Now, as far as disposable income, I'm just going to go over this really quick because there's tons of content and information about this out here as far as finance and personal finance and savings and being wise with our money. But when we say that nobody has $2,500 or $3,000 or whatever price point of $1,500 to invest into Pokemon cards or stocks or real estate or putting it into a business, we only invest what we can afford. That is it. If you don't have $1,000 or multiple thousands of dollars, $50 a month, $100 a month, any of it is okay. We all have to start somewhere. It's okay. It's going to get easier over time, but just don't extend beyond your means. Get what you can afford, and I'm just going to keep it at that, nice and short and sweet. If you want more topics or things about this, let me know in the comments, but let's move on. 
Now, I really want to get to this other part of the message that really caught my eye. And the first thing that I really noticed is the statement that no one is buying these cards off of me. And so when I hear a statement like that, it indicates more of a fast money, flipping, reselling mentality. So if we're buying this card at a hype phase and it just did multiples on multiples of profit, and it goes to $3,000. If we buy this card at $2,500, $3,000 after it's done these tremendous gains, what are we really looking for? We're probably looking to buy this card for $2,500 and hopefully flip it for, let's say, $5,000. And after fees and everything, maybe we make a thousand bucks on it on profit or something. And that is not actually investing, that is more of flipping. And reselling. As far as, let's say, the U.S. government and the IRS, investments are a year or longer. On this channel specifically, yes, I talk about buying this card for $100, and now let's say it's worth $1,500 today. It was worth multiple thousands of dollars just a few months ago, and that was great returns. And I talked about things like me buying Cosmic Eclipse and holding it for years, or buying the Scream promos, another absolutely stunning card, buying these cards and holding them for a long time before we start to see noticeable gain. But what I always say in all my videos is years, multiple years, evolutions. It took years. Cosmic Eclipse, it took years. These tag team cards, it took years, multiple years. And all across these videos, I've mentioned this multiple times, and my frustration with seeing cards that I believed were undervalued and it took a long time for those prices and to manifest and for the market to establish what I believe is a more fair value for these cards. So if we're buying really great cards, if we're patient and we're willing to wait the years that it might take for these prices to increase, then yes, we can see some really great gains. And yes, it'll be very easy to move cards like these if you are willing to wait it out and let the market establish itself and let the prices get to a point where it's just easy to move these cards at any time you like. Now, the biggest part of this message that I really wanted to get to was the phrase useless. And this is the exact word that was used is useless. So I have a bunch of useless cards and there is a lot to dissect with this particular choice of words. And the biggest thing I really have to say about this is when we use the term useless, that very much indicates that maybe we're not the hugest fan of Pokemon, or maybe we don't really like the cards or the hobby. And I'm not trying to put words in someone's mouth. It could just be a little bit of frustration, but when we're purchasing something and we consider it useless, especially in something that's collectible, like these cards, or if we're going to go to McDonald's and buy a Happy Meal just for fun to open some packs and see if we can get the Pikachu, a hollow Pikachu or a hollow a starter from Scarlet and Violet. The first question that really comes to mind is, do you really like Pokemon? Because one thing that I can say about cards like this Mimikyu card, this Latios Latios GX, this Raichu card that we talked about last time in my last video. I mean, these are absolutely stunning cards. And maybe you don't like it as much as I do, but part of the reason that, let's say, this card caught my eye was because I just don't really see artwork like this. We don't see great tag team cards. We've never seen the concept of tag team cards before. Yes, we've had cards with multiple Pokemon. Don't want to go off tangent here. But we never had the tag team cards, cards like this that are so fun. Fundamentally, I thought it was very solid. So things like this, things like the Mimikyu, stunning cards. When I first started my foray into buying Pokemon cards with the hope of making some returns, the one thing I always said was that I started with base set like everyone does or everyone from um, the original eras. We all start with base set or something from the old sets. And when I started buying things like Pikachus from base set, the big thing I always said was, even if the card is ultimately worthless, even if I 
wasted some money buying these cards is I always thought that it was just an awesome thing to have no matter what. This Mimikyu card, it is stunning. I love the artwork on it. Regardless of whether this card is worth thousands of dollars, which it is today, or it's still a hundred dollars or a couple hundred dollars like it was worth years ago, that card is just stunning. I would never consider it, use it useless. I would never think it's junk. And so the reason that I ask, do you like Pokemon? Is because the more you like it, the more you like Pokemon, the more you like characters like Mimikyu or Pikachu or whoever, the more you like them, the more you enjoy the hobby and the different aspects and whether you go for Japanese promos or Japanese cards or English cards or something else, the more you like it, the odds are the better you're going to do. Look at people who have been in this hobby for a long time. A lot of people who have been collecting for a very long time, they tend to have very valuable collections. Now, is it a little bit of time? Is it a little bit of luck? Sure, all of it comes into play. But I think the biggest thing is that because they've been collecting so long, they obviously really enjoy Pokemon. They enjoy the hobby. And most importantly, when you enjoy something, you're going to tend to target cards that are very popular. You're going to tend to want cards that everyone else wants. You're going to want some Grail cards every now and then that everybody wants. And so when you get cards like this Mimikyu or this Latios Latios GX or Mario Pikachu, when you collect these cards for a long time, when you really have fun with the hobby, the odds are you're going to have some success. The reason that a lot of these long-term collectors have such valuable collections is because they have a genuine interest and enjoyment for the hobby. They don't care about values. They just collect it. And I know I talk a lot about finance and money on this channel. And there's people who misunderstand me and this channel quite a bit all the time, at least as far as newer viewers. But I would never consider these cards useless. And so if you're going to be in this hobby, make sure you enjoy it. And yes, we can still try to make a lot of money. We can still make some really hefty profits. I've seen tremendous growth on cards like these, on things like Cosmic Eclipse, I, there's countless cards that we could talk about. And there's tremendous opportunity here, but you have to enjoy it fundamentally. I don't want to say you have to, but it's a very wise decision that if you're going to jump into something like this, you should really enjoy it. And that's where you're going to see a lot more success. And so are Pokemon cards a terrible investment? That is something that we have to each answer for ourselves. But I think if we look back in the 25, 30 year history of Pokemon, over time, the hobby has experienced tremendous growth. We've seen tremendous profits over the long haul. If you're willing to buy the right cards, if you're willing to be patient and wait for things to really develop. And so are Pokemon cards a terrible investment? I'll let you answer that. But I think the numbers speak for itself.